Welcome back to my channel, fellow gardeners. Today I want to talk about the oxalis, and we've done this before. We did a propagation, I think, earlier in the year. And I have these amazing colours that actually I have them in pots and I have it here. So when my visitors do park their car, all they see is these beautiful oxalis. So I have a yellow, I have a pink, I have a white, and then I do have the orange variety. Being an addict of the oxalis, I found this plant and actually I've had it in the garden, but I never respected it. And suddenly I just put it here and suddenly it started flowering and I thought, what a beautiful flower. And so I want to talk about it. It's known as the oxalis arborensensis. And it's a most amazing oxalis because it's different. This one actually stands upright, whereas the other oxalis seems to always tip over. So I want to show you how to propagate this plant because look at these amazing flowers. So my name is Alice and I'm the Red Soil Gardener. Let's start propagating this beautiful oxalis so you too can have one in your garden. So as I was um, looking around the garden and then I saw this and I thought, why don't we talk about it? Because it's such a beautiful oxalis. And again, you have these lovely yellow uh, flowers. And then I thought, why don't I try to propagate it? And I can introduce you to the plant to you. And you could try to look for this plant because it does stand upright as opposed to the other oxalis that do sort of go flat and have their shooting flowers. Now this one, this oxalis, Abosensis is actually quite rare because I've been looking for it in on the internet and not many places have it but the whole thing is that if you do have a friend that has it all I will do is show you how to propagate it and you could actually ask them if you could have a bit of the plant and you too can propagate it and have it in your home and you can actually have them indoors for as long as they they are a bit like succulents but you can have them indoors and they do make a very interesting um, design I mean it's it's almost like an art piece so now what happens is that with the oxalis is that this one being different what does it like it likes bright indirect sun and this particular one i had it in full sun and somehow it did uh, the leaves did get a bit scorched and in the evening it closed up so i did put it in shade before i bought it out but then this particular one I've had in the greenhouse and look at those leaves, beautiful. And they have the three leaves, which are lovely, a bit like a clover. But um, so basically is that it does like indirect, uh, bright indirect sun. Now we look at this sort of soil it likes is basically it is like a succulent. You have to treat it like a succulent. So I would go for anything that is like a succulent uh, cactus mix or you make your own with a bit of compost like I've done and a bit of grit in there. And also it has to be well draining because as it's it is quite um, uh, what you call it, you can feel that it is, uh, it does retain water in its uh, stem, is you don't want it to be a, a waterlogged or clay, where in the end you will get root rot. So what sort of degrees would it cope with? It's that between 15 degrees Celsius and 24 degrees Celsius is what it likes. But you know, you can't have it, like in the Northern Hemisphere, you can't have it left outside after the first frost. Because basically, as any succulent with quite a bit of fluid in its, um, retaining fluid in its stem, it will automatically, the water within it will freeze and break up the cells and you will lose your plant. So with something like this, you can actually bring it inside the house. 
Now, once you do have it indoors, is that it does like a bit of humidity. Here, I have them as outdoor plants, but also, although in Nairobi, the air is pretty dry, is that we do have a bit of an interesting climate because being close to the equator, we are 1,800 meters above sea level, and somehow it does manage. But in, for example, in uh, Europe, if you want to have it indoors, what you could do, because it does like a, a bit of humidity, is have your pebbles on the, fl uh, on, put it on a tray with pebbles, and then also you group it together. In that way, as it transpires, it does exchange this um, moisture within itself. But otherwise, it's actually good to go. So we've talked about the soil, we've talked about the light, we've talked about the temperature, we've talked about humidity. The other thing what I'd like to point out is that because it is, it is an interesting plant, because it is an upright oxalis, is that you could actually pinch it as I will do here at the tip, like that, and then you will get side shoots. So you can actually make it bushy. Like for example, down here, because I actually did something the other day, I am getting a bushier, uh, what you call it, a bushier plant at the base, and this will develop. So now, what I want to do is because I've suddenly fallen in love with the plant and every time I stare at it I think oh god why didn't I just why didn't I think of this plant and I'd like to have many because it is an interesting plant so now with propagation what I'm going to do is show you how to do it we have different methods you can actually once the flowers do flower and it turns into seed you do get a pod that you can collect the seeds, but I find seed collection is very tedious. Another way you can do is that once I did pinch and I got these little pups here at the, at the bottom here, I can actually pick those and propagate it. But at the moment, I just really want to see how this shooting will happen. And now that we have pinched the top, I'd like to get a bushier plant and with these flowers, once they do have this uh, blooms of yellow, it'll look very, very dramatic. So what I'm going to show you is we're not doing seed, we're not collecting the pup, is I actually just want to do a normal stem uh, propagation. Now what I did is that I did go into the plants and, um, and pick them out and decided I really don't mind if it's falling over is instead of doing an upright propagation, I will leave it as is. Now, the th interesting thing also is that if you look at the stem, it really does resemble a bit of like a succulent, but there are so many nodes on it. So that means you will get a good rooting from every single node that is around the stem. Now again, if you look at here, where I did take a cutting a while ago, is it's almost like doing your pinching. So you cut the stalk here and you're guaranteed roots, a side, uh, what you call side branching. And if you do that quite often, you will get a bushier plant. Just like that. Cut there, side branching. So now, when is the best time to do a propagation? Is do a propagation during the growing season, which will be spring and summer. And once you've done that, is that the plant is ready to simulate because it's got enough sun and uh, basically you're good to go. So what I'm going to do is actually look at this plant and um, I've taken several cuttings and some of them I will actually bury like this because if I look at it again is you have these will eventually go into branches. So even if I propagate it lying down like this, I will get shooting going up. So what I'm going to do here is to start off with, I'm just going to snip here. And with this, uh, oh, that looks a bit old. So I will use that. And all I do is here's my soil, which has got, again, as I said, a bit of organic, a bit of grit, a bit of river sand. It's fully well-drained soil. Is what I'm going to do, and we haven't really uh, 
put any water, I'm going to treat it like a succulent, is just take it and stick it in the soil. If you were to actually um, do this, this is a fast forward method, I would actually let it two days and let it sit it, sit it out and let it callous. But in this situation, the soil is not wet, but I will, I will water the soil in maybe two days time after it actually calluses in the soil. So now here, I could actually, it's quite simple, to remove all this um, side shooting, which is actually where the, where the leaves are and, um, and the flowers. And I'll just simply remove it like that so we don't have too many things and we don't want it to go into flower production. So I'm just gonna do that and I'm gonna stick it. But I wouldn't be too fussy about it because <laughs> it'll still grow so I'm going to stick that one in and I'm going to experiment because basically I do believe it's going to jut up there's so many nodes so what I'm going to do is actually remove sort of put this one under the soil like that and then we'll see what happens with it and just cover it <laughs> with soil now I do have others, so I'm just going to, again, just remove some of these. Just like that, and maybe straighten it out a bit. Let's see if we can do it like that. I'm going to put this one in here, like that. Then with these ones, what I'll do is just simply put them in here and, um, and let's, see, let's see what will happen. So with these, I assume, with these ones, I assume that I will get foliage coming around, you know, sort of from the nodes. And um, I think it should work. So basically... Here we go, a simple propagation using the, uh, the stem. But what I found out about these ones is that you have to actually stake them up because sometimes they do fall. And so what I did is I just got one of those uh, locks and staked that one up. But because this one is actually quite tall, I might even remove it and propagate it because um, just to even that out and I will get again I will get growth here of leaves so it looks a bit balanced and I'm going to take this but I wouldn't be too fussy with um, with these leaves and um, when propagating because I have all these propagation was just simply taking and sticking it in the soil and they did take off so um, I wouldn't be too worried about that. And then we can follow it on Instagram as it develops. But what a lovely plant and a very unusual plant. So fellow gardeners, do go and get yourself one of these plants. It's an Oxillus arborensensis and it is quite rare, but do look for it. And if your friend does have it, all you need to do is take a cutting and put it in the soil and it propagates quite quickly and we will follow it up. These ones, uh, the stems that I just put in the soil, I am sure it's going to work. And also it will get sort of side shoots and go upwards because all of these ones I did the same. Now again, just before I finish, is that if you do, as I said, get these pups which are at the base, you can actually take it just like that, take it off, that's your pup. And again, just so that we have enough space for the nodes to reach out, uh, to start rooting. And I would stick it in your propagation soil and it should work. They're all at the base of the plant. So fellow gardeners, there we are with our oxalis 
arborescences, do get yourself one. And if you do go to a friend's house, do get a cutting because they do propagate very quickly. And the thing is, is that how beautiful would you, and you can have them indoors for as long as you do give them uh, light and treat it as a succulent, do your finger test before you water. But other than that, they look very interesting and they do look like sculptures as they move upwards. And do get yourself one. So thank you so much. Do like and share and press that notification button and also subscribe to our channel. Do invite your friends and your family. Have a great viewing of our channel. We do try to make it fun. And don't forget that we do upload our videos every Thursday. So do actually note that down. We are on Instagram. I post all the time. I do post pictures of my garden, anything that's coming up. I do post about my dogs who are my fellow gardeners and I'm on Facebook and do DM me and put your comments. I do always try to answer and thank you so much. So do go and get yourself an Oxillus arborensensis and have fun with it. Thank you so much. Have a lovely day.